good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to sort of talk about alternating current or AC. So I'm going to talk about voltage and alternating current and power and I'm going to talk about how we can realistically look about how that would affect our circuit. Now in an AC, an alternating current circuit, the current changes okay, over time and it's represented by this current here. So the current is the red wave here. Okay, and so it alternates, it goes from positive to negative. Now, current and potential difference are related to each other. That as long as the resistance in the circuit stays constant, if I increase my potential difference, my current has to increase too. And that is using Ohm's law here. So V equals IR. So if R remains constant, if I goes up, V goes up. And you can see that here. That as I goes up, my potential difference goes up too. Okay. Now, power is related to by the equation P equals IV. And power at this point here, so if I actually took the line and I went zero times zero, that's going to be zero. Uh, these two are the maximums. So this could be my maximum power. Zero power. Maximum negative power. Okay. But this is important, it wouldn't follow that exactly. And I'll explain why. The power does something a little bit strange, okay? Because a negative times a negative, of course, is going to be a positive. So I'm going to end up with a wave that looks like this, okay? So as much as you might want to draw an, a power line looking like it's AC, it's not quite, okay? And another reason for this, of course, is that power is energy over time. And energy and time are both scalar quantities, okay? So it won't have a negative direction. It will only have a positive, okay? So power is scalar. So power is represented by this here. Now, your circuit does not get these fluctuations in power, okay? Most transformers and devices have things called AC to DC regulators. But one of the things they do rely on is the fact that you only get the peak power for a very small amount of time. So your circuits want to know what, on average, the power would be, okay? So they actually want to know the average power. Okay. And of course, you've got two variables. Start and an end is going to be your power divided by two. Okay. So if I took my maximum current and my maximum voltage. If I both divided these two by two, I wouldn't end up with my power divided by two, okay? Because remember, if you affect one, you affect the other. So if I half the current, I'm also going to half the voltage, which would be half times a half. That's actually going to be a quarter of my power, which is not what I want, okay? So I need to find a way for these two to change that when they multiply together would be half the power. And this is where this idea of root mean squared comes into. If I took root two and this is root two, root two times root two is two. So I know that my average power is going to be my average current, my root mean squared current, times by my root mean squared voltage. And that is this here. Okay. So my root mean squared 
voltage, which is the voltage that gives me the average power is my maximum voltage over root 2. My root mean squared volt current is my maximum current over root 2. Okay, it's all the idea that voltage and current are intrinsically related to each other. So if you change one, if you half one, you have to half the other. And of course, because they're multiplied together, that wouldn't give you half the power, that would only give you a quarter. So this idea of power, okay, and using this idea of RMS or root mean squared to find the average power, okay, is really important. So let's just give an example here. If my oops, if my maximum voltage was 5 volts and my maximum current is 2 amps, my maximum power is going to be 5 times 2, which is 10 watts. If I wanted my average power, or my root mean square power, my average power, I'm going to divide that by two, it's going to be five watts. So your computers, your devices assume that on average I'm going to get about five watts. Do I get a little bit more than that? I might get a little bit less, but I'll get on average. If I took half the voltage and half the current, I would have 2.5 times by one, which is way too small. So I'm going to use this root mean squared. So I RMS is I max over root two. So it's going to be two over root two. And V RMS is going to be V max over root two. So it's going to be five over root two. Let's have a calculator. So two divided by root two. is going to be root 2, pretty sure of that, and 5 divided by root 2 is going to be 3.5 here, and so root 2 times 3.5 is going to be 5 watts, okay? So this idea of root mean squared is the idea that current and voltage are intrinsically linked. They're going to change. If one halves, the other halves. And to find the average power, I don't need to half the actual voltage and current. I need to divide it by root 2, which is approximately 1.4. Okay, so I'm finding it by 1.4 of the most. So that there is alternating current and root mean squared 